Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, is an American member of the British royal family and a former actress. Markle was born and raised in Los Angeles, California. Her acting career began while at Northwestern University. Her last and most significant on-screen role was that of Rachel Zane for seven seasons in the American TV legal drama Suits. She also developed a social media presence. This included the Tig Lifestyle blog which garnered recognition for her fashion sense and led to the creation and release of two clothing lines in 2015-2016. During the Tig period, Markle became involved in charity work focused primarily on women's issues and social justice. Markle was married to American film producer Trevor Engelson from 2011 until their divorce in 2013. She retired from acting upon her marriage to Prince Harry in 2018, and became known as the Duchess of Sussex. In 2020, the pair stepped back as senior members of the royal family, and later settled in her native California. They now have two children, Archie and Lilibet Mountbatten Windsor. Chapter 1 Early Life and Education Rachel Meghan Markle was born on August 4, 1981 at West Park Hospital in Canoga Park, Los Angeles, California, and identifies as being mixed race. Her parents separated when she was two years old and divorced four years later. Markle's father, Thomas Markle Sr., worked as a director of photography and lighting for married. With children, and Meghan frequently visited the set of the television series as a child, but she is now estranged from her father and paternal half-siblings, Samantha Markle and Thomas Markle Jr. She has a close relationship with her mother, Doria Ragland. Growing up in Los Angeles, Markle attended Hollywood Little Red Schoolhouse. At age 11, she and her classmates wrote to Procter and Gamble to gender neutralize a dishwashing soap commercial on national television. Three months later, P and G changed the commercial. She was raised as a Protestant, but she graduated from LA's Immaculate Heart High School, an all-girl Catholic school. In 1999, Markle was admitted to Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois, where she joined Kappa Kappa Gamma Sorority. After her junior year, she secured an internship as a junior press officer at the American Embassy in Buenos Aires, reportedly with the help of her uncle Michael Markle, and considered a political career. However, she did not score high enough in the Foreign Service Officer Test to proceed further with the U.S. State Department, and returned to New. She also attended a study abroad program in Madrid. In 2003, Markle earned her bachelor's degree with a double major in theater and international studies from Northwestern's School of Communication. In her youth, she worked at a local frozen yogurt shop and later as a waitress and babysitter. She also volunteered for the Glass Slipper Project and at a soup kitchen in Skid Row, Los Angeles. Chapter 2 – Acting Career According to Markle, she had some difficulty getting roles early in her career due to being ethnically ambiguous because I wasn't black enough for the black roles and I wasn't white enough for the white ones. To support herself between acting jobs, she worked as a freelance calligrapher and taught bookbinding. Her first on-screen appearance was a small role as a nurse in an episode of the daytime soap opera General Hospital, a show for which her father served as a lighting director. Markle had small guest roles on the television shows, Century City, The War at Home and CSI, NY. For her role in Century City, she initially told the casting directors that she was a sag after a member, but after being cast as a non-union member the employers helped her join the union according to the Taft-Hartley Act. She also did several contract acting and modeling jobs, including a stint as a briefcase girl on the US version of the game show Deal or No Deal. She appeared in Fox's series, Fringe as junior agent Amy Jessup in the first two episodes of its second season. Markle appeared in small roles in the films Get Him to the Greek, Remember Me and The Candidate in 2010 and the film Horrible Bosses in 2011. She was paid $187,000 for her role in Remember Me and $171,429 for her role in the short film The Candidate. In July 2011, 
She joined the cast of the USA Network show Suits through to late 2017 and the seventh season. Her character, Rachel Zane, began as a paralegal, and eventually became an attorney. While working on Suits, she lived for nine months each year in Toronto. Fortune magazine estimated that she was paid $50,000 per episode, amounting to an equivalent annual salary of $450,000. Chapter 3, Personal Life Markle and American film producer Trevor Engelson began dating in 2004. They were married in Ocho Rios, Jamaica on September 10, 2011 and concluded a no-fault divorce in August, 2013, citing irreconcilable differences. Markle's subsequent relationship with Canadian celebrity chef and restaurateur Corey Vitiello ended in May 2016 after almost two years. In July 2016, Markle began a relationship with Prince Harry, a grandson of Queen Elizabeth II. In November, the Prince directed his communications secretary to release a statement on his behalf to express personal concern about pejorative and false comments made about his girlfriend by mainstream media and internet trolls. In September 2017, Markle and Prince Harry first appeared together in public in Toronto at the Invictus Games, of which Harry is founding patron. Chapter 3 Section 1, Marriage to Prince Harry Meghan Markle's engagement to Prince Harry was announced on November 27, 2017, by Harry's father Charles, Prince of Wales. The announcement was greeted with enthusiasm by the British media, and prompted generally positive comments about having a mixed-race person as a member of the royal family, especially in regard to Commonwealth countries with populations of blended or native ancestry. Markle announced that she would retire from acting, and her intention to become a British citizen. In preparation for the wedding, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, baptized Markle and confirmed her into the Church of England on March 6, 2018. The private ceremony, performed with water from the River Jordan, took place in the Chapel Royal at St. James's Palace. The marriage ceremony was held on May 19 at St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle. Her wedding dress was designed by the British designer Claire Waite Keller. Markle later revealed that there was a private exchange of vows three days before with the Archbishop of Canterbury in the couple's garden. However, this private exchange of vows was not an official legally recognized marriage. It was reportedly agreed in advance that excess funds generated from the BBC broadcast of the wedding ceremony would go to a charity chosen by the newlywed couple. In April 2020, Feeding Britain was nominated to receive £90,000 from the BBC after the wedding, the Duke and Duchess lived at Nottingham Cottage within the grounds of Kensington Palace in London. They later moved to Frogmore Cottage in the home park of Windsor Castle. The Crown Estate refurbished the cottage at a cost of £2.4 million, paid out of the sovereign grant, with the Duke later reimbursing expenses beyond restoration, and ordinary maintenance. Meghan gave birth to a son, Archie Mountbatten Windsor, on May 6, 2019. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex's office moved to Buckingham Palace and officially closed on March 31, 2020, when the Sussexes withdrew from undertaking official royal engagements. After some months in Canada and the United States, the couple bought a house in June 2020 on the former estate of Riven Rock in Montecito, California, where they own a chicken coop with hens rescued from a factory farm. The next month, Meghan suffered a miscarriage. She gave birth to a daughter, Lilibet Mountbatten Windsor, on June 4, 2021. Chapter 3 Section 2 Political Views Members of the British royal family are politically neutral by convention. However, Markle was politically vocal before marrying Prince Harry. At age 10, she and her friends reportedly campaigned against the Gulf War. Decades later, she backed Hillary Clinton during the 2016 United States presidential election and publicly denounced the opponent, and eventual winner, Donald Trump. The same year, when the referendum on the United Kingdom's membership of the European Union resulted in favor of Brexit, Markle expressed her disappointment on Instagram. In 2017, 
Markle recommended the book Who Rules the World? by left-wing intellectual Noam Chomsky on her Instagram account. In July 2018, she was criticized for breaching the protocol that prohibits royals from interfering in politics after Irish Senator Catherine No One tweeted that the Duchess was pleased to see the result of the Irish referendum on legalizing abortion. No One later deleted her tweet and emphasized that her statement was misleading and the Duchess was not in any way political. As an eligible voter in the United States, she released a video with her husband encouraging others to register for the 2020 United States presidential election on National Voter Registration Day. Some media outlets took it as an implicit endorsement of the Democratic candidate, Joe Biden, which prompted then-President Trump to dismiss their messaging at a press conference. In October 2021, she penned an open letter to Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, advocating for paid leave for parents. Her remarks were met by backlash from Republican Representatives Jason Smith and Lisa McLean, who found her statement out of touch and criticized her interference with American politics while utilizing her British royal titles. Meghan has reportedly lobbied senators from both parties on the issue of paid family leave, including Democratic Senators Patty Murray and Kirsten Gillibrand, as well as Republican Senators Shelley Moore Capito and Susan Collins. Chapter 4, Public Life Chapter 4 Section 1, Royal Duties After becoming engaged, Markle's first official public appearance with Prince Harry was at a World AIDS Day walkabout in Nottingham on December 1, 2017. On March 12, the 2018 Commonwealth Day service at Westminster Abbey was the first royal event she attended with the Queen. On March 23, Harry and Meghan made an unannounced day visit to Northern Ireland. In total, Markle attended 26 public engagements prior to the wedding. Meghan's first official engagement after marriage was on May 22, when she and her husband attended a garden party celebrating the charity work of the Prince of Wales. In July 2018, Meghan's first official trip abroad as a royal was to Dublin, Ireland, alongside Harry. In October 2018, the Duke and Duchess travelled to Sydney, Australia for the 2018 Invictus Games. This formed part of a Pacific tour that included Australia, Fiji, Tonga, and New Zealand. As representatives of the Queen, the couple were greeted warmly by crowds in Sydney, and the announcement of Meghan's pregnancy hours after their arrival delighted the public and media. During their visit to Morocco in February 2019, the Duke and Duchess focused on projects centered on women's empowerment, girls' education, inclusivity and encouragement of social entrepreneurship. It is otherwise noted that Meghan participated in her husband's work as youth ambassador to the Commonwealth, which included overseas tours. As part of establishing a separate office from Kensington Palace in 2019, the Duke and Duchess created an Instagram social media account, which broke the record for the fastest account to date to reach a million followers. In August 2019, Meghan and her husband were criticized by environmental campaigners for using private jets regularly when taking their personal trips abroad, which would leave more carbon footprint per person compared to commercial planes. The criticism was in line with similar criticism faced by the royal family in June 2019, after it was claimed that they had doubled carbon footprint from business travel. In September and October 2019, a Southern African tour included Malawi, Angola, South Africa, and Botswana. Because infant son Archie traveled with the Sussexes, this was their first official tour as a family. Chapter 4 Section 2 – Stepping Back in January 2020, Meghan and Harry returned to the UK from a vacation in Canada, and announced that they were stepping back from their role as senior members of the royal family, and would balance their time between the United Kingdom and North America. A statement released by the palace confirmed that the Duke and Duchess were to cease to undertake royal duties, as representatives of the Queen, and would therefore no longer receive the relevant financial support. The couple would retain their HRH stylings but not use them. The formal role of the Duke and Duchess was subject to a 12-month review period, ending in March 2021. 
Meghan's final solo engagement as a senior royal was a visit to Robert Clack School on March 7, 2020, in Dagenham ahead of International Women's Day. Chapter 5 – Further Career and Investments In summer 2019, before announcing their decision to step down in January 2020, Meghan and her husband were involved in talks with Jeffrey Katzenberg, the founder of the now-defunct streaming platform Quibi, over a possible role in the service without gaining personal profits, but they eventually decided against joining the project. In September 2019, it was reported that the couple had hired New York-based PR firm Sunshine Sachs. In June 2020, they signed with the Harry Walker Agency, owned by media company Endeavor, to conduct paid public speaking engagements. In September 2020, the Sussexes signed a private commercial deal with Netflix to develop scripted and unscripted series, film, documentaries, and children programming for the streaming service. In October 2020, the couple hosted a special episode of Time 100 Talks with the theme being on engineering a better world. In December 2020, it was announced that Meghan had invested in Clever Blends, a coffee company based in Southern California. In the same month, Meghan and Harry signed a multi-year deal with Spotify to produce and host their own programs through their audio producing company, Archual Audio. The debut episode of the podcast, A Holiday Special, was released on the service in December 2020. The Bench, a picture book written by Meghan, was published in June 2021 by Random House Children's Books. It is based on her perception of the relationship between her husband and their son. The book received a mixed response, it garnered praise for its illustrations and messaging but was criticized for its structure and writing. Following its release, Megan, alongside Archul, donated 2,000 copies of the bench to libraries, schools, and other non-profit programs across the United States. On June 17, the book reached number one on the children's picture books category of the New York Times bestseller list. In July 2021, it was announced that Megan would executive produce, alongside David Furnish, a Netflix animated series called Pearl. The series was originally pitched to Netflix in 2018. Pearl will depict the adventures of a 12-year-old girl, who is inspired by influential women from history. In the same month it was reported that Meghan and Harry had signed a four-book publishing deal that includes a wellness guide by Meghan and a memoir by Harry. In September 2021, Meghan and Harry went to New York, where they visited the 9-11 memorial with New York Governor Kathy Hochul and New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, and held meetings with the UN Deputy Secretary General Amina J. Mohammed, and the US Ambassador to the UN Linda Thomas Greenfield. In October 2021, Meghan and Harry announced their partnership with Ethic, a sustainable investment firm based in New York City, which also manages the couple's investments. According to state filings from Delaware, where the couple's Archul Foundation is registered, Meghan and Harry incorporated 11 companies and a trust beginning in early 2020 which include Orinoco Publishing LLC and Paker Publishing LLC to hold the rights for their books as well as Cobblestone Lane LLC and IPHW LLC which are holders of their foundation's logos. Chapter 6 – Charity Work and Advocacy Markle spoke at the 2014 Summit for the International Charity One Young World in Dublin and attended the 2016 opening ceremony in Ottawa. Also in 2014, she toured Spain, Italy, Turkey, Afghanistan and England with the United Service Organizations. During her time in Toronto, she volunteered for the Community Meals Program of St. Felix Centre and donated food from the set of suits. In 2016, Markle became a global ambassador for World Vision Canada, traveling to Rwanda for the Clean Water Campaign. After a trip to India focused on raising awareness for women's issues, she penned an op-ed for Time magazine concerning stigmatization of women in regard to menstrual health. She has also worked with the United Nations Entity for Gender Equality and the Empowerment of Women as an advocate. Meghan is a vocal feminist and intended to use her role as a member of the royal family to continue supporting women's rights and social justice. In 2017, 
Markle joined Prince Harry in teaming up with the charity Elephants Without Borders to assist with the conservation efforts taking place in Botswana. In January 2018, Markle became interested in the hub community kitchen run by survivors of the Grenfell Tower fire. She visited the kitchen regularly, and suggested that the displaced women publish a cookbook to assist in funding for the group. Together, our community cookbook, her first charity project as Duchess of Sussex, was announced in September. In March 2021, Megan used proceeds from the cookbook to donate £10,000 to the UK-based charity Himmer to assist them with stocking the group's food bank, provide them with equipment and help the Salam Shalom Kitchen, the only Muslim and Jewish community kitchen in the UK. In March 2020, it was announced that Meghan's first post-royal project would be the narration of Disney Nature's documentary Elephant, which was released on April 3. In support of Elephants, Disney Nature and the Disney Conservation Fund would donate to Elephant Without Borders for species conservation in Botswana. In April 2020, Meghan and her husband, in a private capacity, volunteered to personally deliver foods prepared by the Project Angel Food to Los Angeles residents amidst the COVID-19 pandemic in the United States. In July 2020, she spoke in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. In August 2020, Meghan and Harry collaborated with Baby 2 Baby and participated in drive-through distribution of school supplies to students. In April 2021, the couple were announced as campaign chairs for Vax Live, the concert to reunite the world, an event organized by Global Citizen to increase access to COVID-19 vaccinations. They also announced their support for a vaccine equity fundraiser initiated by the same organization, and penned an open letter to the pharmaceutical industry CEOs urging them to address the vaccine equity crisis. In July 2021, Meghan and Harry were among people who were selected by UK-based charity Population Matters to receive the Change Champions Award for their decision to have only two children and help with maintaining a smaller and more sustainable population. In August 2021, to mark her 40th birthday, Meghan launched 40 by 40, a campaign that asks people around the world to spend 40 minutes of their time mentoring women re-entering the workforce. In September 2021, Meghan and Harry spoke again in support of vaccine equity at the Global Citizen Live concert. In the following month and ahead of the 2021 G20 Rome Summit, the couple penned an open letter together with the Director General of the World Health Organization Tedros Adhanom, asking the G20 leaders to expedite efforts for the global distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. In January 2022 and following criticism aimed at Spotify for their handling of COVID-19 misinformation, Meghan and Harry made an announcement stating that since April 2021 they had begun expressing concerns about the issue on the platform. In February 2022, the couple were selected to receive NAACP's President's Award for their works on causes related to social justice and equity. Chapter 6, Section 1, Patronages and Interests From January 2019 to February 2021 Meghan was patron of London's National Theatre and the Association of Commonwealth Universities. She remains a private patron of Smart Works and Mayhew. From March 2019 to February 2021, she was the Vice President of the Queen's Commonwealth Trust. Until February 2021, periodically, online QCT chat sessions were conducted and uploaded to YouTube for general public viewing. In October 2019, along with other members of the Royal Family, Meghan voiced a Public Health England announcement, for the Every Mind Matters Mental Health Programme. In 2019, Meghan was a contributor and guest editor for the September issue of British Vogue and highlighted the works of 15 women from different areas, who were described as forces for change. Edward Eninfall, editor in chief of the British Vogue, later revealed that the issue had become the fastest selling issue in the history of British Vogue. In the same issue, it was announced that she had collaborated with a number of British fashion houses and stores to launch a capsule collection, called The Smart Set, in September 2019 to benefit the charity Smart Works. The collection sought to help unemployed and disadvantaged women, through selling items on a one-for-one -one basis, meaning an item is donated for each item purchased. Taking advantage of the Megan effect, 
In ten days the collection provided a year's worth of clothes for the charity. Chapter 6, Section 1 Subsection 2 Sussex Royal and Archual In February 2018, Markle and fiancé Harry attended the first annual forum of the Royal Foundation. After marriage Meghan became the Foundation's fourth patron alongside Prince Harry, Prince William and his wife, Catherine. In May 2019, as a part of their Heads Together initiative, the Duchess of Sussex together with her husband and in-laws, launched Shout, a text messaging service for those who suffer from mental issues. In June 2019, it was announced that Harry and Meghan would split from the charity and establish their own foundation. Nevertheless, the couples would collaborate on mutual projects, such as the Mental Health Initiative Heads Together. The following month, Sussex Royal The Foundation of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex was registered in England and Wales. However, it was confirmed on February 21, 2020, that Sussex Royal would not be used as a brand name for the couple, following their step back from official life as working royals. On August 5, 2020, Sussex Royal Foundation was renamed MWX Foundation and dissolved the same day. In March 2021, it was reported that the Charity Commission for England and Wales was conducting a review of the Sussex Royal Organisation in a regulatory and compliance case regarding its conduct under charity law during dissolution. Representatives for the couple claimed that Sussex Royal was managed by a board of trustees and that suggestion of mismanagement directed exclusively at the Duke and Duchess would be incorrect. The Commission later concluded that the Foundation did not act unlawfully, but criticised the Board of Directors for expending a substantial proportion of funds to setting up and closing the charity. In April 2020, Meghan and Harry confirmed that an alternative foundation would be called Archual. The name stems from the Greek word arch, which means source of action, the same word that inspired the name of their son. Archul was registered in the United States. Its website was officially launched in October 2020. Chapter 7, Public Image and Style In 2014, Markle founded her own lifestyle blog The Tig, which posted articles about food, fashion, beauty, travel, and inspirational women. The viewing audience consisted primarily of the fans of Markle and Suits. Promotion of the blog on other social media platforms targeted 3 million followers on Instagram, 800,000 on Facebook, and 350,000 on Twitter. In April 2017, the TIG closed. In January 2018, she took all articles offline and deleted her social media accounts. It is estimated that Markle's social media activities annually earned her about $80,000 from endorsements and sponsorships. Markle became known through the TIG for her fashion sense, releasing two fashion collections with Canadian clothing company Reitmans in 2015 and 2016. The lines were based on her personal style, and that of her suit's character. Markle has cited Emmanuel Alt as her style inspiration. Markle was featured in the cover story for the October 2017 issue of Vanity Fair. Shortly after her engagement to Prince Harry in 2017, she caused a surge of interest in Scottish retailer Strathbury after carrying one of its handbags to a public event. This was reported as an indication that her fashion choices would produce results similar to the Kate Middleton effect. After Markle and Prince Harry's first appearance as a couple, brands Macage, Burks, R and R Jewelers, Crown Jewelers and Evalan noted an upswing in their website hits and sales. It was speculated that Markle's effect would be broader internationally because she already had a strong American appeal. Consequently, the United States saw a boost in yellow gold jewelry sales in the first quarter of 2018. In 2018, Tatler included Meghan with other senior royal women on its list of Britain's best dressed people. Following the announcement of her pregnancy she appeared in a Karen G dress that resulted in the Australian designer's website crashing. Fashion website Netta Porter ranked Meghan as one of the best-dressed women in 2018. And was nominated for the 2018 Teen Choice Awards in the category Choice Style Icon. In 2019, 
British brand Rice reported a growth in profits after Meghan was seen wearing a mini dress by them on International Women's Day. In 2022, the black Armani dress worn by Meghan during her Oprah interview was selected by the Fashion Museum, Bath as Dress of the Year 2021. In 2018, Time magazine selected Meghan as one of the 100 most influential people in the world and placed her on its shortlist for Person of the Year. Her name appeared again on the listicle in 2021 and she and her husband were featured on one of the magazine's seven worldwide covers. In 2019, the magazine named Meghan and Harry among the 25 most influential people on the internet. She was also chosen as one of the 25 most influential women in the United Kingdom by British Vogue magazine in 2018 and 2019, and 2021. Her influence was also recognized in both the 2019 and 2020 editions of Powerlist, the 100 most influential Britons of African and Afro-Caribbean descent. Chapter 8, Privacy and the Media Chapter 8 Section 1, Court Cases Chapter 8 Section 1 Subsection 2 Associated Newspapers Limited In October 2019, the Duchess launched a lawsuit against Associated Newspapers Limited, the publisher of the Mail on Sunday and Mail Online over the publication of a letter she had sent to her father. Thomas Markle Sr. had provided the publisher with excerpts of the letter after five of Meghan's friends referenced it in a People article. The Duchess subsequently received support from more than 70 female MPs from different parties who in an open letter condemned the use of outdated, colonial undertones against her in some national media outlets. In May 2020, the court dismissed claims of the tabloid's alleged dishonesty and malice, as they were deemed either vague or irrelevant to the case. In February 2021, the High Court of Justice found in summary judgment that ANL's mail on Sunday had invaded the Duchess's privacy by publishing the letter, and she won her claim for misuse of private information and copyright infringement in May 2021. She was given a £450,000 down payment on her £1.5 million legal fees as an interim payment, and pursuant to copyright law, her legal team asked for a front-page statement by the Mail on Sunday and Mail Online to acknowledge her legal victory. The Court of Appeal granted ANL permission to appeal against the ruling. The appeal was subsequently launched by ANL in November 2021. Meghan and Harry's former communications secretary Jason Knauf, who had previously denied co-authoring the letter with Meghan, gave a statement to the Court of Appeal, mentioning that the Duchess of Sussex gave him briefing points to share with Finding Freedom's authors Omid Scobie and Carolyn Durand and the Duke of Sussex welcomed the suggestion that they should conceal their involvement, while they both discussed the book on a routine basis. ANL had previously applied to use the book in their defence, arguing that the Duke and Duchess had cooperated with the authors of the recently published book Finding Freedom to put out their version of certain events. Knauf also revealed that the Duchess wondered whether she should refer to her father as Daddy in the letter, as she believed in the unfortunate event that it leaked, it would pull at the heartstrings. Meghan subsequently apologized to the court for not remembering the emails earlier and stated she had absolutely no wish or intention to mislead the defendant or the court, adding that the extent of the information Knauf shared with the book's authors was unknown to her and her exchanges with Knauf were a far cry from the very detailed personal information that the defendant alleges that I wanted or permitted to put into the public domain. In December 2021, three senior appeal judges upheld the judgment of the High Court against ANL, prompting Meghan to call for reform of the tabloid industry. In the same month, ANL's The Mail on Sunday and Mail Online published a front-page statement on Boxing Day acknowledging the Duchess's victory, adding that there had been an agreement on financial remedies. In addition to covering a portion of Meghan's legal costs, the outlet agreed to pay her £1 in damages for invading her privacy and a confidential sum for infringing her copyright. They were also banned from naming the Duchess's friends, who had spoken to People magazine about the letter in 2018. Chapter 8 Section 1 Subsection 3 Other Cases and Complaints In November 2016, the Mail Online was criticized for running an article on Markle's family background titled Straight Outta Compton, which triggered a response from Prince Harry's communications secretary. 
In the same month, The Sun ran the headline Harry Girls on Pornhub. The outlet denied any smear after it was revealed that the clips were illegally uploaded scenes from the TV series Suits, and not pornographic material. They subsequently apologized via an official statement in February 2017. In February 2018, a letter containing white powder and a racist note addressing Markle, was sent to St. James's Palace, triggering counter-terrorism and racist hate crime investigations by Scotland Yard. Meghan and Harry obtained a formal apology in May 2019 from the Splash News for Privacy Invasion. The couple had a legal warning issued to the press in general in January 2020 after the publication of paparazzi photographs. In March 2020, the couple took Splash UK to court after Meghan and her son were photographed without permission in Canada during a private family outing. The case was settled later that year with Splash UK agreeing to no longer take unauthorized photos of the family. The Duke and Duchess announced in April that they would no longer cooperate with the Daily Mail, The Sun, Daily Mirror, and Daily Express. They won an apology in October from American news agency X-17 for taking photographs of their son at their home using drones. In March 2021, ITV News reported the Duchess had complained directly to ITV's CEO about Piers Morgan's comments on mental health following her interview with Oprah Winfrey. Ofcom received over 57,000 complaints about the program including one from the Duchess of Sussex. In the same month, it was reported that an American private investigator unlawfully handed over personal details about Meghan to The Sun, including her social security number, cell phone number and address when she first started dating Harry in 2016. Meghan and her husband condemned the predatory practices of the British tabloids, while The Sun stated that the investigator was instructed clearly in writing to act lawfully, and they did not use the information he provided for any unlawful practice. In July 2021, the Duchess filed legal complaints against The Times for two separate articles, with the first one covering an unproven allegation from Robert Lacey's book that she had left an engagement in Fiji for not being appointed by UN Women as a Goodwill Ambassador and the second one claiming that the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge had refused to talk to Harry after Prince Philip's funeral due to fears of a potential leak. In January 2022, the couple mutually filed a legal complaint against The Times for an article reporting on Archul raising less than $50,000 in 2020. In the same month, she complained to the BBC regarding their five-part podcast Harry, Meghan and the Media, in which the presenter Amol Rajan stated that the Duchess had apologized for misleading the Court of Appeal in her case against the Mail on Sunday. The BBC responded by issuing a statement on its Corrections and Clarifications website to emphasize that she had apologized to the Court for not remembering email exchanges. Chapter 8 Section 2 Bullying Allegations and Oprah Interview In 2021, shortly before the Duke and Duchess were due to be interviewed by Oprah Winfrey, the Times reported that the Duchess's former communications secretary, Jason Knauf, complained in October 2018 that her conduct at Kensington Palace had caused two personal assistants to quit and had undermined the morale of a third employee, prompting an investigation by Buckingham Palace into the bullying allegations. The palace hired an external law firm to examine the claims, with ten aides reported to cooperate with the review. Criticism of the Duchess for twice wearing earrings gifted from Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman in 2018, after he was accused of complicity in the assassination of Jamal Khashoggi, appeared at the same time. Her representatives denied her awareness of the accusations against Mohammed bin Salman, and said the Times was being used by Buckingham Palace for a smear campaign against her. In an updated epilogue for the couple's unauthorized biography, Finding Freedom by Ahmed Scobie and Carolyn Durand, the authors claimed that two of the individuals mentioned in email asked for any allegations made to HR about their experiences with Meghan to be rescinded. Speaking on behalf of the Duchess in a BBC documentary, Jenny Affia, a lawyer who represents Meghan in her case against a &L stated that the bullying allegations were just not true. The television special Oprah with Meghan and Harry was broadcast on CBS on March 7, 2021. Meghan spoke about her personal and royal life and public pressure. 
She discussed contemplating suicide during her time as a working royal and talked about a perceived lack of protection for her and her son while being part of the royal institution. There was a wide and polarized reaction to the interview. Chapter 8 Section 3 On Twitter and Other Platforms In March 2019, European consulting firm 89UP reported on their discovery of 1,103 highly connected Twitter accounts with more than 2.5 million tweets in favor of the Duchess of Sussex, most of which appeared to be cyborgs carrying out coordinated attacks on royal correspondents, who had reported negatively on Meghan. In the same year, CNN had reported on a research by Hope Not Hate, stating that out of 5,200 abusive tweets directed at Meghan in January and February 2019, 3,600 came from a small group of trolls. In October 2021, Twitter analytics service Bot Sentinel released their analysis of more than 114,000 tweets about the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, as a result of which they found 83 accounts with a combined number of 187,631 followers that were possibly responsible for approximately 70% of the negative content posted about the couple. The report prompted an investigation by Twitter. Twitter stated that it found no evidence of widespread coordination between the accounts, and said that it had taken action against users who violated Twitter's conduct policy. Bot Sentinel also released three more reports in the following months, arguing that the accounts were part of a bot network and a similar network could be found on YouTube. In January 2022, the BBC named Meghan and Harry among people whose photos and videos were used in fake instant profits advertisements and Bitcoin-related investment schemes. Chapter 9, Titles, Styles, and Arms Meghan became a princess of the United Kingdom upon her marriage to Prince Harry, entitled to the style of Royal Highness. After her marriage, she was styled Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Sussex. She also holds the titles of Countess of Dumbarton and Baroness Kilkeel. She is the first person to hold the title Duchess of Sussex. Following the Duke and Duchess's decision to step back from royal duties in 2020, the couple agreed not to use the style of Royal Highness in practice, but still technically retain the style. Chapter 10, Filmography Chapter 10 Section 1, Television Chapter 10 Section 2, Film Chapter 10 Section 3, Books Markle, Megan. A Face Without Freckles Is a Night Without Stars H.R.H. The Duchess of Sussex, Forward, in, The Hub Community Kitchen. Together, Our Community Cookbook. Ebury Press. ISBN 978 1529102925. OCLC 1055685104. Megan, The Duchess of Sussex. The Bench. Illustrated by Christian Robinson. Random House Children's Books. ISBN 978-0593434512. Chapter 10 Section 4, Authored Articles and Letters. Markle, Megan. It's All Enough. Darling Magazine, republished online, November 6, 2018. Markle, Megan. I'm More Than Another. L. Republished online, December 22, 2016. Markle, Megan. With fame comes opportunity, but also a responsibility. L. Markle, Megan. How periods affect potential. Time. HRH The Duchess of Sussex. HRH The Duchess of Sussex introduces the September issue in her own words. Vogue. HRH The Duchess of Sussex. HRH The Duchess of Sussex shares a new Smart Works initiative. Vogue. Meghan, The Duchess of Sussex. The Losses We Share. The New York Times. ISSN 0362-4331. Meghan, The Duchess of Sussex. 
A letter on paid leave from Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. Paid leave for all. Tedros Adonum Gebraeus, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. Meeting the COVID-19 vaccine commitments. World Health Organization. Archived from the original on October 29, 2021.